Hi club members and welcome to this week's Lunch and Learn. What we're talking about today are the three categories of patients that I suggest that you use within your dental practice, which will help you to communicate effectively with your patients and manage them throughout their journey within the dental practice itself. It also helps you to identify what kind of systems to implement within your practice to make sure that you are meeting all the needs and creating a standard of care that the patients you're trying to attract into your business so it all works very well for them. Now, these three categories of patients recognise that not all your patients are equal. They don't all come in equal number of times throughout the year, spend the equal amount of money throughout the year. They also don't have the equal amount of input and engagement within their treatment itself as well. They all require different modes of communication. But each time we develop a system to implement within our dental practice, we have an assumption of that broadly, are we communicating effectively with our patients? And I think it's difficult to have that broad brush cover everybody. And I think having 20 different categories is just too much unworkable. So I brought it down to three categories. So let me go through and take you through the benefits and drawbacks of each of these categories, how I define them, and then the, how that has then a knock-on effect until throughout the management of the practice. Let's go. So the three categories are the transient, the loyals, and the perpetuals. So let me tell you a little bit about what each one of these are. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. First of all, let's have a look at the transients. Now, if the transients come in for emergencies and they're usually not regular attendees to your dental practice. You can always tell a transient quite often on the phone when they call the practice to start off with. They might say things like, oh, I haven't been to the dentist for 15 years or I've had this toothache on and off for five years. This broken tooth has been around since my first marriage. <laughs> so you can often tell within that initial telephone call to the practice, this patient may be a transient. If you can't tell at that point, then the minute this patient opens their mouth up clinically in the surgery, you can tell straight away. There's usually quite a bit of tartar buildup, other breakdown areas that haven't been addressed, and their oral health clearly indicates there hasn't been a lot of maintenance of any kind within their mouths. Now, the transient patient will ring you guys up and say, can you see me today? If you can, groovy. If you can't, no problems from their perspective. They'll just ring the next practice on their list. They don't have any particular loyalty to your practice. They often come in once or once every five years, whenever they have a dental emergency. But again, if they've seen you once before, they'll likely call you again next time they have an emergency a couple of years down the track. But if you can't see them, then again, no skin off their nose, they'll just call another local dental practice. So there we go. We've got a tip beside the emergencies. They do come to see you for emergencies. They've got a cross next to routine treatment because during that emergency dental visit, if you were to say to them, which is quite likely what you would say to them, I can see it's been a little while since you last had a checkup. I would suggest you book that in or I can see other problems going on in your mouth that do need to be addressed. I'd suggest you come on in. They won't necessarily book in for that in actual crack is highly likely that they won't book in for that. They just want to get their urgent treatment organised with you today. They've also got a red cross against recalls. If you put them into the recall system, they are unlikely, very unlikely to respond to that. And so they've got a good tick on the emergency side, a cross on the routine treatment and the recalls side. We're going to talk a little bit more about different behaviours of these different categories as the slides roll on. The second group are the loyals, and the loyals are the ones that only want to come and see you. So as you can see there, they've certainly got a tick beside the emergencies, because if they ever had an emergency, you would be the first people they call. They've also got a tick beside routine treatment, because if during that emergency visit you said, oh gosh, I can see a broken tooth on the other side of your mouth, you need to get that seen to, they'd say, sure thing, I'll book in for that as well. So their oral health is important to them. It is a priority for them. However, they do not necessarily make regular six monthly or even 12 monthly or even two yearly recall appointment times. They come in every now and again for a recall. Uh, but if they do need any treatment of any kind, they will call you first. And if you can't fit them in, it doesn't matter. They'll work around you because they just want to see you. They are less likely just to do a ring around to other dental practices. 
There's a red cross beside the recalls because, as I say, they don't necessarily come in for recalls in, with any frequency or regularity. It's more of a, oh, I guess it's been a few years since I last had a checkup and clean. I might as well come, go on in and book an appointment time. Now, the reason I call this category loyal is because when I reflect back over to when I had my dental practice from 2003 to 2013, I had purchased a practice that had an ongoing goodwill. It had been going on for decades prior. And David, the previous owner, I got him to, you know, at the start, write a lovely letter encouraging all of his patients to come continue seeing us at the practice, even though David wouldn't be there. And I thought I'll send that letter out to everyone that's been over the past five years, thinking that I would capture all the important people <laughs> uh, and tell them about the change of ownership and the change of dentist within the practice. Now, because when I owned the practice, I wasn't the dentist, so I was on the front desk answering all the telephone calls and doing all the management side, I would get patients over the years calling, they hadn't been for eight years, upset that they were never notified of the change of ownership. And it made me realise that these patients considered themselves as loyal as any of my more regular patients because they never saw anybody else. They really truly believed that that practice was the best one for them. They didn't stray. And so they certainly considered themselves as loyal. So then from that point on, I considered them as loyal as well. And so the loyal patients, crucial to your practice because they only ever want to see you, but they don't necessarily come for their regular checkups and cleans. The third category are the perpetuals. And the perpetuals are just like the loyals with one difference they do turn up every six months or every 12 months at the outside for their regular checkups and cleans. And so oral health is very high on their priority and all they need to do is know that six months is up and they, oh, I'll book straight in again for my next appointment time. I'm due. Whether there's a problem that I'm experiencing or not, it is, a, it is part of my habit of life to make sure I maintain my oral health. And so these are the three categories of patients. You will be able to identify with each one of those. The transients who may just come once or twice in their whole lifetime to see you, just for emergencies, nothing for ongoing care. The loyals, certainly for ongoing care, just not the recalls. And the perpetuals are everything, the ongoing care and the recalls as well. Now, let's have a little look at some of their behaviours. With the transient group, their commitment to the actual appointment times they book in with you can be quite low. Often as a receptionist, I experience somebody calling up, have an emergency, so sorry, we can't see you for the day today. We can book you in for tomorrow. So they book that appointment time. They're afraid they're not going to be able to get it anywhere else. And then the tomorrow comes and they never turn up to that appointment time because they continue doing a ring around and ended up getting in somewhere else. But didn't bother calling you back and saying, can you cancel that appointment time? It was just too much effort for them. And because they don't have any actual relationship with us, it's no skin off their nose just to let us down. You would never get a perpetual patient do that. If a perpetual patient made an appointment time for tomorrow and then found out later on in the day they couldn't keep that appointment time tomorrow, they would ring. They wouldn't just leave us hanging. They don't want to damage the relationship that they've got with us. And with that relationship, you've got that element of friendliness that you you really don't want to let each other down. The transients don't have the benefit of that relationship and so it makes no difference to them. They've got less to lose in terms of letting us down. And so their commitment to appointment times can be quite low. They've got an, uh, a perception of value in the services that you provide. The value that a transient patient has in your services is when you can get them out of pain. There is big time value in that. However, when you try to indicate to them the value of a checkup and clean, determining what else is going on for them, developing a treatment plan, and then moving forward throughout that treatment plan to get them to a space of good oral health, uh, they're not all that committed to that at all. And so there is some perception of value because we can get them out of trouble. But then any other perception of value over the other services that we provide, it's really not there. So it's got an amber colour there. <laughs> And then in terms of when we communicate with them, these transient patients, to encourage them to book in for incomplete treatment, such as what's in the treatment plan for them now, which is a checkup and clean, 
or putting them into the recall system. So they do get a contact in six months saying it's been six months since you've been last here. And so why don't you book in? Their response rate to that is, no. Nah. That is not on the horizon. That is not important to them. That is not their priority. And so we usually get a very low response from them in terms of incomplete treatment follow-up and recall follow-up. Moving into our second category of the loyals, how do they behave in these different areas? With the commitment to appointment times, a big green thumbs up, yes. They do commit themselves to the appointment times. Just like the perpetuals, the loyals have often been with us for years and years, and they do have a strong relationship with us. They do not want to let us down. They do have something to lose if they were to let us down. And so the commitment to appointment times that the loyals have, green light, thumbs up. The perception of value in our uh, services, again, green light, thumbs up. If you say to them, I see another big broken tooth there that needs to be addressed. I see some gum inflammation down here that needs to be addressed. They will go ahead and book another appointment time. They may not be terribly responsive in terms of the recalls, but certainly they have a high value in the services. They, they receive the services from us. They see strong value. And the value that they receive, that any person receives from the, from the services that you provide, can be determined by their response to the fees that are attached to all the services as well. Loyals are maintaining their relationship, their dollar spend with you all the time. That means that they see value in the fee that you charge charge for the service that you provide. They're happy with that. Otherwise, they'd go somewhere else. And so there is a strong perception of value in the services that you provide. And then it's out in terms of the response to the incomplete treatment and recalls. They, the loyals would book in if they were reminded that, remember, you've got that broken tooth. Remember, you've got that decay. They may not book in for, remember, that's a big filling. Go ahead and get a crown done. Or they may not book in for, it's been six months for your recall, time to book in. They go, oh, I'll just leave it for this one. I'll wait for the next reminder. And so they've got a amber uh -huh, response to the incomplete treatment and recall, incomplete treatment follow-up and recalls because the incomplete treatment, I think it depends on the services that you have suggested. And with the recalls, they're not every single six months or even every year. They can blow it out a little bit longer. Shifting to the perpetuals and their behaviours, they have, yes, big time commitment to their appointment times with you. They would never just fail an appointment time knowingly and let you down like that. And once they book that appointment time in, I'm in. It's important to me. I'll cancel other things to make sure I can do that appointment time, that I can attend to that appointment time. Perception of value in services, absolutely top notch. These are your regular patients that everybody in your practice knows by their first name. They come in, they're very familiar. They've got strong rapport with everybody. They just love you guys. They often refer a lot of friends and family to you too because they do love you guys. And so their perceived value in the services that you provide is really, really high. You never have these patients say, I don't think your services are worth the money that you charge. <laughs> They've also got a big green thumbs up for the response to incomplete treatment and recalls. Their oral health is so important to them. They just need a prompt from you if they've not already booked in before. All they need is that reminder. They'll book in straight away. Now let's have a look at these three categories and what value they provide to the practice itself. With the transients, they've got a low financial contribution. They may come more than once, but quite often they don't come only once. And so they've got that one appointment time. It could be two appointment times where the first one's been an assessment of what needs to be done. Now we'll book you in for the extraction appointment time. So that's where it could be a couple of appointment times. But they'll come in for one episode of treatment and that's it. And so the financial value of these patients may be ranging from $100 to $300, $400 if it includes an extraction, for example, and then that's it. They don't spend any more with your practice because they are unlikely to return. So low on financial contribution. Low on forgiving of inconveniences. This is the other thing that we get to enjoy when we have more regular patients, more frequently attending patients that have had the chance to build up that strong relationship with us. They have grown to trust us that we will look after them that when the compressor breaks down and we have to cancel the appointment time, when we're running half an hour late because something terrible happened with another patient beforehand, 
the people that have got a regular, beautiful rapport building relationship with us, they trust us. If those sort of interruptions happen, they're forgiving of them. Your transients are far less forgiving. They get impatient very quickly if we can't see them on time. One of the reasons being they're probably in pain at the time and they've been their tolerance for that emergency is over with and that's why they've turned up to the appointment time. But if there were any interruptions to the standard operation of the day, they are not very forgiving of any of those kind of inconveniences. Also, will they increase the goodwill of the practice? Really, no. <laughs> We'll talk more of the value of the goodwill of the practice in a minute, but the goodwill value of all of your patients is your turnover every year. That's how much the goodwill is worth to you because that's what they, these people spend with you. But when we bring it down to an individual patient category and what they're worth financially to the goodwill of the practice, it's very minor because they tend to only come for one episode of treatment and therefore their dollar spend is quite low. They're not a continuing contributor to your turnover. Value to the practice for the next category, the loyals. Financial contribution, it's amber, it's in the middle because they spend all of their dental dollars with you but because they don't come in for recalls, they could be contributing financially to you once every couple of years, once every three or four years. Only ever with you, but just not very frequently. Are they forgiving of inconveniences? Yes, they are, because they have trust in you, they have faith with you, they've got a relationship with you. Do they increase the goodwill value of the practice? They're in the middle there. They absolutely have continual spend with your practice. It's not as frequent as the perpetuals, but it is absolutely over a longer period of time than the transients. Let's move to the perpetuals. Financial contribution, that's high. They're spending money with you every six months, plus more. So if at the six monthly recalls you say you need to have a crown, they'll spend that as well. So they're spending more than every six months. If you need to have sealants, they'll do that as well. You've got a broken tooth, fix it. I've got an emergency, fix it. So they're spending money with you both consistently and frequently. Next point, are they forgiving of inconveniences? Hell yeah. <laughs> All you have to say is, I'm so sorry we're running late today. No worries. You always normally run on time. I understand you're going to look after me anyway. I've got trust and faith in you. So they're certainly forgiving of any inconveniences throughout the operation of the day. Do they increase the goodwill value of the practice? You betcha. These are the sort of patients that really have strong value to your goodwill because they are here for a long, long time and because they spend frequently. Now, talking about the value of the goodwill, looking at these three categories, have a think to yourself, within my practice, the one that I work for, the one that I own, what percentage of my patients are transients? What percentage are loyals? What percentage are perpetuals? With your advertising and your marketing, which group do you appeal to? Have a think about that. It's going to play a big role in your value of your goodwill as to which group you nurture, you try to encourage to return, you try to attract more of into your business. Not surprisingly, it's going to be the perpetuals if you have got a majority of your client base as perpetuals. That's going to be very good for your goodwill. And there are so many benefits around that. Let's go to the absolute extreme. Let's just say you've got a dental practice that 100% of those clients are perpetuals. Do you need to advertise for new patients? If you're already booked out a few weeks ahead, you don't have to advertise for anything. Because <laughs> the only way you lose a perpetual is if they pass away or if they move far out of the area. Even if they move a little bit far away, they will still come back to you. But there's always going to be that boundary where they go beyond that and all of a sudden they're going to go somewhere else. You will unlikely have to advertise at all because whatever new patients are coming through the practice are likely referred by them. They're referring like-minded people, so they're likely to be perpetuals themselves as well. And so your marketing budget is down. And so sometimes you, I come across dental practices and you say, well, how many new patients are you getting every month? There are some that say eight, 
10 new patients every month? Many practices out there would be amazed that they've got such a low figure. Yet this perpetual field practice is more successful than any of the others because even though they've only got 10 new patients every month coming through, they have got their books filled with patients who they love seeing, who love spending money with them. They come back again and again and again, engaging them in their treatment and their appointment times is no big deal. They're already there. They're on board with it all. They love it all. They don't have all the issues and dramas around broken appointment times. They don't have the problems with patients getting upset because the slightest little thing went wrong. These practices are gloriously happy, gloriously productive, absolutely viable, and have a very strong goodwill value. They don't need any more than 10 new patients a month. Going to the other end of the spectrum, I've also had some practices tell me proudly, we have 80 new patients a month and it's a two-chair practice. However, that doesn't always mean success because why do you need 80 new patients a month? How can you fit in 80 new patients a month? Do you think the transient heavy practice would have space in their appointment book every month to fit in 80 new patients? No way. The transient heavy practice are more likely to have longer examination appointment times and so they can properly educate, inform, engage the patient in what's going on in their mouths. That's why they've developed such great relationships with these patients. That's why the patients trust them so much. That's why the patients just book in with whatever you say because I understand everything that you have said and I need this treatment. To fit in 80 new patients every month, maybe those appointment times could be a whole lot shorter so you're not getting that patient engagement. Maybe you're seeing 80 new patients a month because you advertise that you will, we will see any emergency and your advertising is really going towards those emergency patients coming through, the ones that only ever attend once and hardly ever again. Both practices are likely to be heavily booked and possibly even booked out a couple of weeks ahead. However, one, the transient heavy practice it's more of an enjoyable ride, enjoyable conversations with enjoyable people, enough that with adequate time put aside for every appointment time. And the other one may be hectic and crazy. Bang, 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 appointment times. Patients leaving and you think, gosh, I don't think they fully understood, understood what was going on. They seem to have a lot of questions at the front desk, but they're booked in. Let's hope they keep that appointment time. And so who make up your patient base? can really have an enormous part to play in not just your turnover and profitability, but your level of efficiency and the amount of stress you have to put up with every day. So you are attracting one group over the other with all of your promotions. So I encourage you to have a really good thing about who you are currently appealing to in terms of adding to your client base when you are advertising and promoting your practice. Quite often, we do fall into the trap that more new patients, the better. Mm -mm. You want to try to appeal to the patient that's going to have better long-term value to the practice. You always see the transients. There's no question about that. Transients can have a beautiful benefit to your practice. One, you're fulfilling what it, one of your roles in the community, which is to help people who are in strife in the, with their dental health. But a transient patient can be so grateful for you getting them out of trouble and so impressed by your customer service that they're still out there talking you guys up. Oh, I had this terrible toothache, but thank God that place down the road, oh, they were awesome. They were so friendly and gentle. I love them. If you ever have a rubber problem, go down to see them. So they can be a fantastic referrer. They can also be leaving great Google reviews for you online as well. But in terms of the people that you're trying to appeal to, to make up a bulk of your goodwill within your practice, a bulk of your patient base within your practice, I suggest it's the loyals and the perpetual that are going to be giving you a better bang for your buck. We spend a lot of money on marketing and promotion, a lot of thought goes into it, a lot of energy, but we also spend a lot of thought, energy and time on developing a particular type of service. Because the other trap we can fall into when we are appealing to the more transient category of patient is if we get transient heavy in our patient base, 
then we have got more broken appointment times. We've got more resistance to paying bills. We've got less engagement in treatment plan and treatment recommendations. We have got less commitment to behave well as a patient within our practice and do all the right things the way that we function well with. And so we have to develop a whole bunch of systems to cater for those things. For example, just the broken appointment time issue. If we are getting transient heavy in our client base, then we have got a high number of broken appointment times. We have to try to control it. So all of a sudden we put in systems to try to manage that, such as broken appointment time fee, such that you cannot cancel within 24 hours notice of your appointment time, such as we're not going to just confirm you once, we're going to confirm you four times. <laughs> That's when your appointment time is, come on, please turn up. Now, these systems will possibly and likely help reduce down the broken appointment rate, time rate, with that transient group. However, the group that are turned off by those sort of conversations, those sort of policies, those sort of communications from their practice are the loyals and the perpetuals. They don't like that. It's averse to the kind of relationship they have with you. They feel possibly slightly offended that you would even assume that you were just going to think of the appointment time with such little priority that you just not turn up. Why are you threatening me with a broken appointment fee? I've always been good. And so this is where long-term members of your practice, long-term clients of your practice may start to think, gosh, you know what? It's not as pleasant coming here anymore. It's not as easy to deal with these people anymore. I don't feel as valued as I used to anymore. And so they start to drift and go somewhere else, somewhere that's a little bit easier to deal with, that is a bit friendlier, more patient-focused. So not only do you have to start implementing systems to help manage and cater to all the issues that the transients present to your practice, but you actually are pushing out your regular clients, the ones that make up great value within your goodwill. So that is a flawed process, I believe, and it's something that you should try to avoid. So I do encourage you with your promotions and your advertising, have the loyal and perpetual groupings, categories in your brain. Because what you want to do is not just get any new patients through the door. You want to get the new patients through your door who are actually currently seeing other dental practices, they're already loyal to somebody else. And all it's going to take is for that somebody else to start diminishing in the value that they present to that patient. All they start to hear about you guys and how well you cater to your market and the kind of services that you provide. You're trying to convert existing patients from other practices to come to you. So you need to make sure that all of your systems are friendly to that group. So so using that example of the broken appointment time fee, that should never be a blanket system. That should only be a system for a transient type patient. And within most dental softwares, you can actually categorise patients. And I suggest you put these three in. Because the minute... The receptionist hears, I haven't been to a practice for 15 years and I've got a terrible toothache. They can mark them as transient straight away. So then if that patient doesn't confirm the appointment time they, they made for a week's time, you know they're a transient, so you've got to make real sure that you're contacting them until you get a verbal, yes, I'm definitely coming to that appointment time. And to actually let them know that there is a broken appointment time fee should they cancel late or not turn up. However, We don't want that conversation with the loyals and perpetuals, certainly not the perpetuals. The perpetuals want to maintain our great relationship. We don't want to sully it. We don't want to tar them with the same brush as the transients. They're better behaved in terms of what makes up easy operation of our dental days. So when you're putting your marketing strategy together, when you're communicating to your potential market out there, think to yourself, okay, Let's bring to mind one of our favourite loyal patients. And you'll be able to bring a patient to mind, one that you really enjoy seeing. They have a lot of value in the kind of service that you offer. They just may not come every six months, but they're so enjoyable to have as part of the practice. Identify that one one patient. Now do the same for a perpetual. And then think to yourself, what do these people need to hear from us for them to convert from their existing dental practice over to us? 
for whenever they seem unhappy at their existing practice and they're looking around, they're seeing the messages from us that are appealing to them and they want to give us a call. What needs to happen? And start promoting your services in that way. Because the value of your goodwill over the years will be higher if you have a more perpetual, loyal, patient, heavy patient base. The other impact that understanding the categories of your patients has is that you can now design more elegant processes for your recall system and tracking patients with their incomplete treatment. And that is because once you recognize who you're dealing with, okay, our recall strategy is going to be an acknowledgement that the perpetuals just need a quick reminder and they'll book in straight away. They've likely already booked in six months prior. The loyals need to have a little bit more convincing to come in this time. Don't wait for another six months, come in this time. And the transients, well, they're not going to respond anyway, but we do have a professional obligation to them to say to them, you're due to come in. And so this is where you can go, okay, let's be smart about this. Let's understand what we're doing here with our categories, who we're trying to communicate to, what that message needs to look like. And so that's why I always encourage the SMS as the first step of a recall strategy because the transients, that's just your professional duty. The loyals, it won't be enough for the loyals. But again, it's a professional duty. The perpetuals, that's all they need. They, I didn't book six months prior to, so all I need is the SMS. I'm on the phone straight away. I need to book my appointment time in. And so then we do a second step to our strategy to try to get the loyals to come in. Don't worry about the transients. You've fulfilled your professional obligation to them. They're not going to respond anyway. The perpetuals have already booked in. So now we know the second step of our recall strategy is to appeal to the loyals. So we send them out a brochure or information about why they should book in this time and not wait another six months. Talk to them about all the benefits of utilising their health fund rebate dollars, of making sure that their systemic health isn't being compromised by their, by their oral health, that there's no breakdown, that their breath is going to be nice and fresh after the cleaning. All the things that may sway a loyal to be a little bit more regular with their appointment times, with their recall appointment times. Incomplete treatment, again, Contact the transients once because they won't respond. That's your professional obligation. With the perpetuals, I doubt that any perpetual would be on your incomplete treatment unless they just weren't aware that the treatment needed to be done in the first place because the perpetuals are the ones that have complete faith in what you say and they just go ahead and book straight away. It's a, oral health is a high priority for them. And so then you start to understand that it's the loyal category. It's your loyal patients that we are going to be in communication with when we're designing our strategy for incomplete treatment management. And what they need in that moment is to remind them of the importance and sense of urgency that they need to have over that one issue that's going on. Remind them what the ramifications are of not getting that area treated. You may not get all of them, you may get some of them, but at least you are communicating with your patients in whatever strategy we're talking about in a more elegant way that is much more customized to the person that you're trying to speak to that you're going to be appealing to. Categorizing your patients into these three separate categories has many benefits for your team and whatever you can do as a practice to put systems in place that really reward and make the experience with you wonderful for your loyal and perpetual patients is a fantastic strategy to use moving forward. Absolutely have a wonderful system of seeing emergency patients. Always have emergency spots put aside every day so these sort of patients can come in and have their own wonderful experience with you and talk about it to all their friends and family. However, it's going to be the value of your goodwill that is going to assure your long-term viability. And to be able to do that, it's going to be making sure that your new patients that you're appealing to to come into your practice, the ones that you're attracting into your practice, if they're the loyals and perpetuals, then you are getting stronger and stronger all the time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you at the next Lunch and Learn. I hope you have a fantastic week. Thanks.